The South Carolina Hall of Fame was founded in Myrtle Beach in 1973 to recognize and honor contemporary and past citizens who have made outstanding contributions to South Carolina's heritage, history, and progress. Thomas Hayward Jr. was born in what is now Jasper County, South Carolina, and was the descendant of one of the earliest English colonists to settle in the area. Thomas Hayward Jr. is actually from a very, very wealthy rice planting family. So he, he's really born into this Creole elite society of South Carolina. These are the wealthiest planting families that sort of run the colony. Although his early education was here in South Carolina, Thomas's father sent him to England to study law under the Royal Crown at the Middle Temple. There, young Thomas became well aware of the disparaging statuses between colonial English subjects, like himself, and native-born Englishmen. Well, they see themselves as Britons living in an empire that no longer values them as Britons. It allows them to start thinking of themselves as perhaps not belonging to the British Empire in a way that they would hope that they did. After his studies abroad, Thomas Hayward Jr. returned to his native land as one of the earliest supporters of the Patriot cause in the colony and was placed in the first General Assembly of the new state. At age 29, he was elected to the Second Continental Congress in 1776. On July 4th, he cast his vote in favor of independence and signed the Declaration, an act his father believed to be treasonous. The revolution really divided families. We think today, since we sort of know who won the war, that being a loyalist didn't make much sense. In many cases, for a wealthy rice planter, independence and, uh, or, or even military action was not the most obvious choice. Despite their differences in political ideologies, he remained very close to his father until his death the following year. On July 9, 1778, Hayward signed the Articles of Confederation on behalf of the state of South Carolina. Leading up to the Revolutionary War, Hayward had accepted an appointment as a criminal court judge and oversaw the matter of a most sensational trial near the city of Charleston. He presides over trials involving loyalists in South Carolina. They're accused of treasonous activity with con conversing and corresponding with the British. And they are convicted and executed in full sight of the British military. Hayward sort of moves to the top of their most wanted list as a result of that activity. He served as a captain of artillery in the South Carolina militia and was wounded in battle in 1779. Hayward was particularly sought after during the revolution because of that, that uh, series of sensational trials. And uh, in fact, his plantations are, are quite devastated. The following year, during the siege of Charleston, he was captured and imprisoned in St. Augustine, Florida, along with Edward Rutledge until the end of the war in 1781. After the war, Hayward served his state once more as a delegate during the adoption of the state constitution in 1790. Soon after, he left politics, overseeing the family's plantations, and had withdrawn from public life altogether by 1799. He died March 6, 1809, at the age of 62, and is buried at Old House Plantation in Ridgeland, South Carolina.